Hey, what is going on you guys? Today, we're gonna to be going over how to build a stock watch list with buy, hold, and sell signals in Google Sheets. And like always, this is a completely interactive spreadsheet. So let's say that I wanted to buy um, O and hit enter and we can set my target buy price and my target sell price. And based off these metrics, all of this data is gonna automatically fill in and based off our target buy and our target sell, you can see we will get a signal accordingly. We can also change our charts. We currently have a 500 day chart. Let's say we wanted to see a 250. We just type out 250 and hit enter and you can see all these charts will update automatically as well. So this is a completely automated spreadsheet, so it's very useful. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet or any of my other portfolio or crypto trackers in Google Sheets, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay, so I have a new Google spreadsheet open and I'm just gonna come up here to the top and go ahead and title this. And I'm just gonna put in stock watch list with signals. And if I come up here to the top, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and list out everything that is gonna be up here on the top. So I'm gonna put things like my ticker, my price, I wanna know my 500 day change. I wanna know my days change as a percent and as a dollar amount. And I also wanna know what the 52 week high is and what the 52 week low is. And then I wanna see some dividend metrics as well. I'm a dividend investor, so that's important to me. So let's put in the amount paid out in dividends and the dividend yield. And let's add price to earnings as well. I'll just put in PE for that. And then I also wanna see the industry and we'll come back to our target buy, target sales and signals a little bit later. But I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste some data in right here just for some sample stocks. And so for our price, we're gonna use the Google Finance function. I have videos on this function, but essentially this allows us to pull live stock data if I just use this function and come over here and click on 3M, and it's gonna give us the live stock price for 3M. So if I just come here and drag this down, you can see we now have the live stock price for all of these different stocks. And let's go ahead and pull this over a little bit, and let's go ahead and start with our 500 days change. This is gonna be our chart. And in order to do this, the first thing I need to do is I'm actually gonna come up here to format and we're gonna come over here to number and down here at the bottom, we're gonna have a custom number format. And I'm gonna type out a number. You can see the format right here and then I want it to say days change. So I'll apply that. And essentially what that's gonna allow us to do is just insert a number but the words days change will stay. And I'll show you why that's important for automating this charting process in just a moment. So let's remove this, put in 500, and you can see we still have our days change. So let's go ahead and start with this formula. And this is a more complicated formula, but um, I have videos where I've used this before, but essentially we're just gonna use the spark line and we're also gonna use the Google Finance function in order to make a chart. So I'm gonna come over here, we're gonna make a chart with 3M's price, and we're gonna chart it from today and minus the amount of days we have listed right here. And I'll have this formula posted in the description as well as any of the other more complicated formulas as well. And then we're gonna take that, we're gonna take today as well. And then we're gonna close out our Google Finance and Index functions. And then we're gonna come over here and do some formatting. And essentially I'm gonna type out chart type and this is gonna allow me to select what kind of chart type I want here. And for this, I'm gonna select column. And then after this, I will add a semicolon and type out color. And then just go ahead and select the color that you want your chart to be. I'm gonna go with purple for this video. And I'll go ahead and hit enter on this and let's see if it works. And it looks like it is working, so we have our chart. 
and we drag it down and you can see we have our 250 day chart. If I come over here and change the number of days and hit enter, the charts will now adjust accordingly, which is why we wanted to link up that formula with the number of days. So let's go ahead and keep moving forward now. For our days change, we wanna use the Google Finance function again. We'll come over here and select A2 and just type out change and close off this parentheses. And you can see we now have our days change. I'll drag this down. Now I wanna see our days change as a percentage. So I'm gonna do almost the same thing. We'll type out Google Finance, select 3M. In quotations, I'm gonna type out change PCT for percent and hit enter. And let's see, let me go ahead and fix my spelling error. And I'll come here and drag this down. And okay, it looks like I need to make one more correction. And I need to, in order to make this percent, I need to come over here outside the parentheses and divide by 100. We'll hit enter and drag this back down. And okay, so now we have it showing up correct. So let's go ahead and keep moving forward. We'll do our 52 week high. We're gonna use Google Finance again, select 3M over here. And we're just gonna type out high 52. And I'll drag this down once again. So we're gonna do the same thing for our 52 week low. It's almost the same formula, but this time we're gonna use the word low. And it looks like I messed this one up. Oh, I need to flip this. Let me make that correction. And okay, so now we have the 52 week low. I'll drag this down. So we have all that data filled in and we're ready to start with our dividend data. And in order to pull dividend data, we're actually gonna web scrape this from a website called finviz.com. So if I come up here and type out 3M stock ticker and select it, you can see we'll have all this data on 3M show up. And if I scroll down, we have this data right here and we wanna web scrape the dividend data, which you can see is right here. And I do have a video on how to web scrape in Google Sheets and how to pull dividend data in Google Sheets where I go more into detail how to do this. But I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this formula in. And I'll have this formula posted in the description as well. But if you wanna learn more about web scraping in Google Sheets, you can check out my video at the link in the description. But you can see here, I pasted the formula in and we now have the amount paid in dividends and, and it looks like it is correct, so our formula is working. And you can see the formula right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this down. And so now that we have the amount paid in dividends, we can easily find our dividend yield. What we're gonna do is take our current dividend and divide it by the current price and hit enter. And we will make this a percentage so we can see our dividend yield. So now we're ready for our price to earnings. This is gonna go back to our Google Finance function. And we're just gonna select 3M over here and type out PE. And we'll close this off and hit enter. And now we have our price to earnings. And we'll drag it down just like we have been. So now we're ready to move on to industry. And again, we are gonna web scrape this data from Fidelity. And I have a video on my channel on how to web scrape this as well. But essentially we go to Fidelity Research, we'll come over here and type out 3M stock ticker. I'll hit go. And let's go ahead and scroll down and see if we can find the data we're looking for. And oh, here it is right here. We're gonna pull in this sector right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this formula in again. I'll have this formula posted in the comments or in the description. And you can see the formula right here and it looks like it's correctly pulling in the industry. So I'll go ahead and drag this down. So now we have all the data that we need for our spreadsheet. We All we have left is to add our signals and add some formatting. 
So let's go ahead and start on that now. So the first thing I'll do is I'll highlight all this. We'll go ahead and get this text centered just to make it look cleaner. We'll make sure everything is the right font. Then if we go ahead and select all of our data and come here to format, we can go to alternating colors here and you can see it's gonna give us a lot of options for how we wanna color in our data. The yellow looks pretty good, I use that a lot, but I think for this video I'm gonna stick with my purple theme. And let's go ahead and highlight this and see if we can get the spacing to look just a little bit nicer. And okay, so I think that's starting to look just a little bit better. I'll bold this text as well. Let's go ahead and format some of this up here as well. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to my days change data and I'm gonna add some conditional formatting. So I'm gonna highlight it and go to format. And we'll go to conditional formatting right here. And essentially we're gonna say we want anything that is greater than zero. We want the text to show up green. And we'll add another rule. We'll say if the text, or if the number is less than zero, we'll want the text to show up red and hit done. So that's just gonna allow some of our data that changes often to stand out a little bit more. So now let's go ahead and start on our signals. So for our signals, we're gonna have a target buy price, a target sell, and then we're gonna have our signal listed out to the side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in some random data for our target buy and target sells. And based off this data, that's data you'll enter manually it's up to your own preference, but based off this, we're gonna build our signals. And to do this, we're gonna use an if statement. And we're gonna say if B2 is less than L2, then we want it to say buy. And then we're gonna add another if statement, and we're gonna say if B2 is greater than M2, then we are gonna want it to say sell. And if not, we want it to say hold. And again, I'll have these more complicated formulas posted in either the description or in the comments. So you can see when I drag that down, all of our signals fill in automatically. Let's go ahead and highlight these and add conditional formatting as well. So this time we're gonna do conditional formatting on the text. So we're gonna say if it text contains buy, we want the text to show up green. And if it says hold, we'll adjust the color here. We'll add another rule. And if it says sell, we want the text to show up as red. And it looks like I need to go back and fix hold. I meant to make hold yellow. And there we go. Okay, so now we have our conditional formatting for our buy, hold, and sell signals. And remember that's based off the data that you put as your target buy and your target sell. Let me go ahead and do some more formatting and close this off here. Let's see if we can fit it all into one page. So now our stock watch list with signals is officially complete. So let's go ahead and test everything out to make sure it's working properly. So let's say we wanna keep an eye on O stock. We'll put in O. We can see all these metrics updated automatically. Say we want to see a 365 day chart. We'll put that in and that seems to be working as well. Let's make our target buy price 50 and our target sell 60 and hit enter. 
and we get a signal to sell the stock based off of that. So it looks like that our stock watch list is officially complete. So that being said, please remember if you'd like to be able to download this or any of my other portfolio trackers in Google Sheets, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.